welcome to this uh, Azure function session. Uh, today we are going to use uh, HTTP trigger and uh, to build two endpoints, one for uh, welcoming a user and another for registering a user uh, for a fictitious uh, delivery company. So let's start uh, using uh, Visual Studio, Visual Studio Code. Uh, I'm going to show you, uh, we have here uh, Visual Studio Code and I'm going to show you how to build uh, Azure functions using uh, Visual Studio Code. So first thing is we need to install this Azure tools uh, which will give us all these uh, different packs or you can directly uh, go and install Azure functions uh, which I've already done. Um, I'm going to discuss about how to install this uh, and setting up your environment for Azure functions in a later video. But for now uh, I'm assuming that you're all uh, set up and ready to go uh, with Azure functions. You can also, you can directly install this Azure Functions extension and then start. So once you have installed this, you would see this Azure icon here and click on the icon and uh, I'm going to click on a new project. Uh, let's create a new project. I'm going to select this. I've already created a folder called uh, function app HTTP trigger. I'm going to select this folder and I'm going to use C sharp. Uh, the template would be HTTP trigger. There are various triggers available for uh, Azure functions. Right now we're going to discuss about the HTTP trigger. Um, and let's say, and uh, the function name would be like, uh, we're trying to welcome a user and uh, register a user. So let's do welcome user. Uh, this is the name of the function. And the company name would be delivery app dot things. It's a namespace. I, I just chose this namespace. And let's make the function anonymous. Uh, we can also use function and admin, but uh, for now let's make it simple. Uh, let's use anonymous functions. Um, let's say open in the current window, it's fine. Uh, it's creating a project as you can see here at the bottom. I'm going to zoom this a little bit so that you can see the code clearly. So now if you can uh, see this uh, clearly here, uh, it says there's some unresolved dependencies. Just say restore and it'll go away magic um, and then uh, let's let's talk about the class that's been generated here so we have one static class called welcome user that's the name of the function we gave that's why it used the same name here uh, we have function name attribute uh, which is what uh, Azure uses to notify to mark that it, this function is a Azure function and we have this uh, namespaces coming up Azure web jobs and Azure extension HTTP uh, as we explore this uh, Azure functions, uh, we would use various extensions. Right now we're using only HTTP trigger, but as we use various extensions, we would have to e include those namespaces as well. Uh, for, for a different trigger, we would use a different namespace here. I'm gonna talk about those in the next uh, sessions that are coming forward. Uh, let's talk about this. So we have this static class and we have a static method and uh, it is asynchronous method and it has a task as a task I action result as a return type. Uh, we have a HTTP trigger attribute, which has a authorization level of anonymous. And then we have two endpoints here, get and post. Generally an Azure function, uh, one Azure function can be, can be called using both uh, uh, get and post, but for the simplicity, let's remove, uh, let's remove the post and just make it get for now. Let's make it just uh, get for now. So we're gonna build this welcome user uh, function. Uh, I'm gonna make it as easy and as simple as possible. So let's comment out the code which we are not using. So let's comment out all this code here. And let's have, let's make this username. Uh, that is the input I'm gonna give. And let's return a simple JSON response uh, welcoming a user. So let's call this new, uh, Let's have an attribute called message. Let's remove this. And let's have a simple response with the username. So let's put dollar here. So hi username, welcome to the delivery app. That's a very simple uh, JSON response I'm gonna give. So once again, uh, to quickly summarize, right, we have a HTTP request coming in and we're using the query parameter of the HTTP request called name. And then we're sending back a response 
uh, welcoming the user. So let's run this and see what happens. So now uh, I'm gonna make this up, but yeah. So for running this, we need to save the file and then we need to press F5. So I'm gonna run and start debugging. So this will create a HTTP endpoint for us, uh, which can be invoked using a get uh, HTTP method. So I have an endpoint here called uh, welcome user and I'm gonna copy this. Uh, I'm gonna put on postman. Oops, uh, postman here. And, uh, and it has only one parameter called name, if you can see here. There's only one parameter called name. So I'm gonna add that parameter. Uh, so question mark name equals to domain. So I don't need to, you know, honestly, I don't need to put this double quotes, this name, okay? And I'm gonna send this uh, request to the local host uh, function and see what happens. So there you go. So I'm getting a message response uh, with 200 okay, uh, which says, uh, hi Naveen, welcome to the delivery app. So basically our Azure function has worked and uh, we have, which is a very simple function, which has a get method and which is res resulting in a response, uh, JSON response. So, th so the next function uh, we're gonna create is, uh, I'm gonna stop this for a second. Um, so the next function we're gonna create uh, will be the registering a user so which will be a post method instead of a get. So let's see how this can be done. I'm gonna copy this, I'm gonna make it e easy puzzle. So I'm gonna copy this because it's already working and I'm gonna make some changes. So let's create a new file. Uh, let's call it register user and uh, copy paste this and just change very little things to make it work. So I'm gonna make this register user. I'm gonna copy this and change the function name here. I'm gonna make this post because we're posting, uh, we are using posting post HTTP protocol. And I'm gonna remove this get and let's use the post. Okay, so let's remove this and I'm gonna uncomment this. So we are, a post has a request body and so that's what this is. So let's define, define a request body first. So let's create another file called as a user model. Um, this will be having the user name. I'm gonna use the same namespace here. So notice how I'm create, quickly creating this. So I'm creating uh, same namespace, I'm using the same namespace. I'm creating a simple class called uh, user model. I'm gonna make it public. And I'm gonna define simple attributes called public string first name, public string last name, and a mobile number. That's all you need to uh, for registration these days. That's it. So I have this user model ready, and it is in the same namespace as uh, the functions, which means I can uh, directly associate it. I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna go to register user. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna remove this dynamic. I'm gonna paste it here. Uh, so that when it deserializes, I'm actually deserializing user model. So I'm actually making it here user model. So that way I'm uh, deserializing a user model instead of uh, some dynamic object. This makes it much easier. Um, so we can just send a thank you message to the to the user. Like so, let's say um, the hi data dot first name. Actually, we can make it user here. So make it user dot first name. And uh, thank you for thank thank you for registration. That's it. Um, let's run this and see what happens. So, so I would expect uh, the Azure system to create two endpoints now. Um, one for get and one for post. Let's see what happens. So 
Yeah, there you go. So we have two endpoints here. Uh, one is for uh, get and one is for post. Uh, let's invoke the post and see what happens. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this. I'm gonna paste it on the post. I'm gonna create a new function, new uh, post request. I'm gonna paste it here. Because it's a post, we need a body now. So we, we select body, we select raw, and we select uh, JSON. And we just have to build the JSON object that we actually created in the user model here. So we have first name, last name, and mobile number. So back here, again, just first name, last name, and some mobile number. So mobile number. Five one zero three six four one. Okay. Uh, let's put the country code um, plus one. Okay. So that's it. Um, that's the only thing that, that you see is I'm using here uh, camel case uh, instead of pastel case because I'm assuming that this would actually uh, do the serialization correctly. So let's see what happens. I'm gonna send this. So it correctly says, hi Naveen, thank you for the registration. So here, uh, if you see here, I can see that uh, the register user uh, function has been executed. It has this ID and it took about 71 milliseconds. And this is the request ID, the status and the duration. So basically uh, we click, so now I showed you in this uh, video uh, how I've created two different uh, Azure functions, one for a get and one using a post and how the Azure system uh, lists the various functions in your project. Let's talk about uh, an advanced concept called uh, execution context. Uh, so that this will help you to debug and log uh, your Azure functions correctly. So what you can do is for every function, there is something called as execution context. Um, so let's call it execution, let's call it context as a variable. So this execution context uh, will tell the system uh, what function is getting executed and what is the ID of that function. So let's try to print it out. So I have this function context here. Um, I'm going to add that message here just so that we know what's happening. So let's call this uh, metadata equals to bar. So I'm using this context variable and using this something called as uh, invocation ID. Uh, this will tell us the ID of the function invocation. Suppose for example, uh, in Azure functions, right, I can have multiple instances of a function running uh, based on the number of requests um, the Azure function receives. That's how it scales up. So that time the execution uh, context and the invocation ID would be different because it's a different Azure function that is processing your request. So let's see uh, how to do that. So let's add the uh, invocation ID here. And also add the function name. So the function name is this is very useful for logging actually. Yeah. So this is how you capture metadata for a function uh, using the execution context. So let's run this. Start run. Um, it's gonna take a while. Yep, now let's go to Postman and run it. So if you can see here, I have an invocation ID, uh, which is a GUID that tells you the the instance on which the function is running. And I also have the function in register user. I'm gonna run it again. So the invocation ID has changed now. I'm gonna run it again, it's just changed again. So you see this, for every invocation, uh, I'm getting a different invocation ID for the same function. Uh, this is very useful for uh, debugging, logging, uh, in case uh, functions invoking 
other functions or in case a function is calling a web service internally uh, this can be used as a correlation id to correlate uh, how a function request is going through the different chain of uh, events see you guys in the next session uh, thank you very much